About a week or so ago, I did a video on the whole Audacity telemetry situation where basically Muse Group decided to acquire Audacity. And the first thing they decided to do was push through a little bit of a patch. That patch was going to be adding in five and a half thousand lines of telemetry related code. Now this was going to be using Google Analytics and Yandex Metrica to do all the analytics stuff. And while it was going to be opt-in, they didn't explain this in their original pull request, which led to people kind of rightly freaking out because all they really said is, hey, there's going to be telemetry, it'll use Google Analytics, enjoy the rest of your day. Now, since then, they've actually listened to a lot of the community feedback and have decided to open up a discussion to talk about what they propose to do now. One thing I do want to note about the original telemetry is it was going to be opt-in. And when you have opt-in telemetry, if you are being 100% clear about the data that is being sent, I genuinely don't care how much data you collect. If it says in very clear text, if you opt into this, we will collect a constant stream of your thoughts and every single action you ever take, if you opt into that, that is entirely your own fault. Now, with their original telemetry, it was saying things like, we will collect anonymous usage statistics. That isn't clear. While you could certainly speculate about what that means and assume things like it's not sending your real name back, different companies have different definitions for what that actually means. It wasn't actually showing you the exact data being sent. So what they're planning to do is very simple. Firstly, we are dropping the features proposed in PR 835. That was the original telemetry pull request. Now, I'm really surprised about this because they were very clearly set on telemetry actually being useful, even if it was going to be opt-in telemetry. I had expected them to, I guess, restructure the way it works, maybe just stop using Google Analytics, but continue with the telemetry. My guess is sometime in the future, they will probably bring it back. Secondly... Regarding features that require networking, we would like to include error reporting and the ability for Audacity to check for updates. Now, I didn't know that error reporting was just missing from the application. That's a perfectly reasonable feature to have there. Now, as for checking for updates, I'm not as big of a fan of, but I can understand why it's going to be there. And lastly, all of the error reporting servers and update checking servers are going to be self-hosted. Now, they fully acknowledge that this was a massive blunder on their part and probably should have never happened. As they see here, we're very sorry for causing so much alarm. Our intention was to make an initial announcement about our plans to introduce telemetry on the Audacity forum, similar to how we discussed the topic for Muse Score in 2019. In that instance, I think the fact that we introduced the issue openly resulted in a lot less suspicion. So basically what I said last time, where what they probably should have done isn't made the pull request, they should have opened up an issue or a discussion about it, and then if people, you know, liked the way it was going, then make the pull request so you don't have a bunch of this wasted effort. And also it just results in less people generally freaking out. You can certainly argue whether telemetry is a good idea in the first place, but without having that discussion, especially since a company had just acquired Audacity, it looks like the company is basically just trying to co-op the application. They go on further to say that Audacity has no interest in harvesting or selling personal data, and Audacity will always be free and open source. The response to PR 835 has brought about a realization at Muse that the convenience of using Yandex and Google is at odds with the public perception of trustworthiness. Now, I've had a couple of people complain to me about this phrasing right here because you can basically show that Google Analytics is not trustworthy because, yes, Google will openly sell data. The reason why they said this right here, this is basically lawyer speak for do not sue us, Google. We are not slandering your company. Now, on telemetry, they say telemetry is a practical tool that tells us a lot about how an app is performing or underperforming. Is this new feature being used a lot? Is this button being discovered, etc.? We assumed that making an opt-in would allay privacy concerns, but since this isn't the case, we are dropping it. Now, this is a bit of a weird understanding of how telemetry works, because if you make telemetry opt-in, it effectively becomes useless because what you're trying to get with telemetry is a good representation of how people are using the application. If it's opt-in, that severely biases the data. That's not to say that I want telemetry to be opt-out. I would much prefer it to just not exist altogether. But the only way to get a representative sample is if it is opt-out and most people don't opt-out. 
Now, they also say they're looking into other acceptable alternative solutions that could achieve the same goal. Now, I don't know what could achieve the same goal as counting the people who open an application compared to counting the people that open an application. No matter what you do, I think that that's going to end up being telemetry. It's a bit of a weird phrasing. I think what you're much better off doing is coming up with some way to do the telemetry in a way that people won't actually complain about. Regardless though, a lot of people who use Linux follow the mentality of KISS. Keep it simple stupid. And if the code isn't being used, it's effectively considered to be code bloat, so I don't think you're going to be able to do anything that will satisfy everyone. Now on to the error reporting. So they say, we are currently interested in SQLite errors, application crashes, and non-fatal exceptions. If one of these events is detected, a dialogue will appear that explains the nature of the problem and offers to send an error report to us, the Audacity developers. Now this dialogue will contain an option to view the complete error report data before it is sent. I think this is very, very important because even if you say, hey, this is the data that's being sent, or if you say, oh, it's going to be anonymous, it's going to be anonymized, a lot of people aren't going to believe you. Showing the data and letting me decide, like, okay, is this really as private as I want it to be, and then deciding if I want to actually send it, I think is very important. Also, equally prominent buttons to send or don't send this particular error report. In the original telemetry pull request, there was this dialogue right here, where the button to actually send the data was bright blue. Now, this is a marketing tactic to encourage you to actually click on the button. They're not going to be doing that in the new version. They're both presumably going to be grey. Making them both blue would be kind of weird, so grey makes more sense. Now, because this is being done over the internet, naturally it is going to leak your IP address, but there's no way you can get around that. One thing they don't bring up in here, though, is sometimes if it needs to show a file path, it will leak your username. It isn't clear whether that part of the path is going to be truncated or what's going to be done to that, but I think that is something that does need to be considered. Now, as for the error reporting software they're using, that is going to be a system known as Sentry. Now, I don't know anything about Sentry myself. If you've used it, do let me know what your thoughts are about it, but this is what it is they're using, and it seems like it's going to get the job done, and it's something they can self-host, so I think that pretty much hits all the requirements. One thing really unclear from this is who is actually going to have access to the data. While they say it's going to be Audacity developers, does this mean the ones that are working at Muse Group? Does this mean people have been submitting patches for the past year? Some random person who's submitted one patch? just anyone in the public, who actually has access to the data. If it is given to all of the contributors, it does put them on more of an equal footing, where even though the person isn't a maintainer of the code base, they can still look at these problems and say, okay, maybe this is something we should actually go and address. Also, when someone is actually working on some sort of new telemetry or error reporting feature, they have to carefully review what is actually being added because they know that everybody can see the data. It also makes it much easier for third parties to audit the data and make sure they're actually collecting what they say they're collecting. And also, it limits the scope to what is actually provably anonymous data. The one major disadvantage of doing that, though, is if it is somehow poorly designed and actually does pick up some personal data, it could potentially leak it to the public. And this is a very quick way to get a GDPR lawsuit. Now onto the update checking, which is where stuff gets a little bit weird again. So they say there will be an option to disable automatic checking. This implies to me, I might be reading it wrong, but what this is saying to me is that update checking is going to be opt out. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad feature, but the way that I would go and handle it is the first time you go and open up the application, it just shows you a prompt saying, hey, do you want to have automatic update checking enabled? Yes or no? And that's all it really needs to do. The way it's phrasing it here makes it sound like it's just going to be enabled and you just won't know about it until an update actually happens. On Windows and Mac OS, having that feature enabled is actually really useful because most people don't run one of the package managers available on those systems. But on Linux, I have my package manager. My package manager is going to be responsible for updating. Please don't bug me about updates. So this is going to reveal your IP address, your OS version, and Audacity version. Now, some people said, oh, you don't need to reveal your OS version, Audacity version to do an update. 
you know that Audacity is available on more than one operating system, right? You, you do need to reveal that. So, yes, having that revealed is perfectly fine. Bizarrely, though, they're going to be storing IP addresses, not the raw IP address. That won't be stored or logged, but we will store a non-reversible hash of the IP address to improve the accuracy of daily statistics. Now, I don't know what this is supposed to mean, and I don't know why you need to store an IP address, even if it's just a hashed version of it, to go and do that. That's a bit sketchy. I don't know what exactly they're trying to achieve there. But they will also use the IP address with their self-hosted geolocation database to determine the country the IP address is located in. So I guess they're using it to determine what countries are using Audacity, but they're probably also using that feature to work out what the closest update server is. You don't need to geolocate an IP address to work out what the fastest server is. That's the point of doing a ping. A lot of the time, the closest server isn't going to be the fastest anyway. I do really hope they clear up this section because what it sounds like to me is they're hiding a bit of telemetry inside of one of the other features, which I don't like the sound of. I'm not trying to say they're doing anything malicious, but that's the way it reads to me. Now, throughout this entire post, there is absolutely no mention of the vendoring problem, which seems like it's still going to be there. They don't mention anything about how they're going to be handling libcurl, so my presumption is they're probably going to be just sticking the source code for it in the application like they were planning to do before. While there are some very questionable points being made throughout this discussion, I do think this is a better direction than what they had before, and I hope that as time goes on, Muse Group actually learns how to communicate with the Audacity community and not cause another massive drama. I'm not very hopeful, I have a feeling they're going to make another mistake at some point, but I can at least hope. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comment section down below. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andre Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, uh, Mitchell, Peter D, Stephen, Tears, Theroux, Tony Tushar, and all of my two dollars supporters. If you'd like to support my work, there'll be li 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 links down below. I'm not redoing that. I've also got my podcast, Tech Over T. I also run a gaming channel where I stream twice a week playing various video games. That is Brody Robertson Plays, available on YouTube and also over on Twitch. If you'd like to watch this channel on a platform that isn't YouTube, it is also available on Odyssey. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.